All right, I'm standing out here in the city of Pittsburgh, standing at the historic site of Forbes Field. As you can see, I'm at the outfield wall or the remnants of that outfield wall, a uh, historic site for being the site of the 1960 World Series, as well as the spot where Babe Ruth hit his last three home runs. So now let's start to think about, well, why is Forbes Field called Forbes Field? Let's take a look. When looking down from Mount Washington at the city of Pittsburgh today, it may look this way. However, in the middle of the 18th century, it certainly did not. As three groups, the Native Americans, the French, and the British vied for control of this valuable piece of territory. France would soon lay claim to this area, setting up Fort Duquesne, also setting the scene for a world conflict which would be known as the Seven Years' War or the French and Indian War. In the summer of 1755, the first expedition to reclaim this territory was led by British General Edward Braddock. Despite material and manpower advantages, Edward Braddock and his force was defeated along the banks of the Monongahela River by the French and their Native American allies. A few years later, General John Forbes would take control of the British Army in this area. Unlike Braddock, however, Forbes would start his route in Philadelphia, heading west across Pennsylvania with the goal of ending up at Fort Duquesne and capturing it once and for all for Britain and away from the French. As Forbes and his forces approached Fort Duquesne in 1758, what he discovered was that the French had evacuated the fort and burned it to the ground. After being taken over by Forbes and his men, Fort Duquesne would soon be rebuilt and renamed Fort Pitt in honor of William Pitt. John Forbes had a huge impact on North American history in addition to local history in the city of Pittsburgh. It's not surprising then that streets, buildings, and Forbes Field are named after him.